Hi, and welcome to An Artist Drink Cocktails. I'm your host, Katie Phillips. Whether you're an artist, a collector, or anyone who appreciates originality, I want to give you a behind the scenes look at the creation process and hopefully spark some inspiration along the way. Today, I'm going to go visit Kristen Cooney. Kristen is not only a talented artist, but she's also a dentist and a mother of triplets. So you know she's got that time management down to a science. I also learned a great deal about offering high quality prints that collectors will love and some advice for artists who want to do the same. Kristen Cooney. She is an uh, Marietta-based artist. Yes. Yes. Thank you for having me over and for making me this delicious uh, You're welcome. Yes. Welcome. Cheers. Cheers to mimosas. Yes. These are our mimosas that we made this morning for breakfast. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice way to start the day, right? Right. <laughs> doing art as a job mm -hmm. for maybe six or seven years. Oh, wow. Just started um, once my kids got a little bit older right? Um, and I had a little more free time on my schedule. Uh -huh. And um, But my other job is a dentist. Right. I work still as a dentist, uh -huh. part-time, and then um, every time I get a chance to paint, I paint in my little studio here at the house. That's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I love it. Okay. It's nice to have a good balance between all those things. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> so how long have you been an artist? So I've always painted, mm -hmm. you know, even when I was little. And then in college and been through dental school, I didn't paint at all. It was kind of stressful. Right. Just doing school, making it through there. And then um, as once I got done, even though I was a dentist and I was working full time, I still had classes. I did right. classes at the Atlanta College of Art downtown, which is not there anymore. Uh -huh. That's how long ago it was. But then I've been painting ever since and taking community classes. So oh, I'm wow. a self-taught artist. Self-taught, okay. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that you're also a dentist on top of your art. So yes. tell me, um, and then I read um, on your website that your uh, your dad said that, um, that there's art and dentistry. So how do you, okay. so like, do you feel like there, um, you get to create, uh, like express yourself creatively through your dental practice? To a certain extent. Yeah. I feel like, um, in my dad is a dentist, okay. so, um, he always encouraged me to do that. And then, but I knew I always wanted to go into medicine. So that was my major and, um, but it's hard to incorporate art into medicine in general. Right. <laughs> but with dentistry, you get to, you know, there's a lot of classes throughout dental school where you're uh -huh. talking about color, chroma, value, and things like that, that I really just am drawn to naturally. Right. So um, it just worked out with that. Mm -hmm. But in everyday practice, I do cosmetic cases where okay. you get to incorporate that and make people happy by giving them art. <laughs> it's a little more stressful than right. <laughs> a painting, <laughs> but um, it worked out to be a great profession for me. That's great, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, it's like you uh, you kind of think of people as being either like left-brained or right-brained, but it sounds like you've got like a great <laughs> amount of both, you know? Yeah, I like to do a little bit of, of everything. Yeah. You know, it's hard to find a profession where you can do to both. But there are a lot of things that I'm not good at, like numbers and all that. Oh stuff. gosh, <laughs> <laughs> me either. Don't don't give me a mess. No, 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 yes, no, thank you. Okay, so not only are you a dentist, an artist, but you're also a mother of triplets. So yes, <laughs> you must be amazing at time management. So like, tell me, like, how do you like juggle all of that? Yes, it's um, well, if you have multiples, you. Even if you're not organized, you have to become very organized. Right. <laughs> so that was an awakening toward, for me. So I had to write down exactly what I was going to do every day, yeah. what time slot I was going to do it in, and um, try to fit everything in and just make it through the day so I can go right. to bed. But then um, that has helped me throughout. Like when they're little, you have to keep track of who ate what, how much they drank, you know, everything. <laughs> and um, make sure you use your time wisely during the day. So that has um, helped me out a lot too with um, having dentistry and art because they're very 
different uh -huh, yeah <laughs> and um how to schedule my day so i can get everything in right. and not feel overwhelmed right okay so um, i'm dying to see your studio so your studio is here at your home right yes we okay. have it upstairs in my house so okay. it's easy to get to okay so let's go see your studio okay <laughs> thanks <Yeah. laughs>I spent most of the time um, doing my creative stuff and painting here and um, in this area I just keep all the paints where that I'm usually using a lot which is a lot of pink <laughs> <laughs> a lot of light colors and light blues they're all here easily accessible these are all my acrylics not all of my acrylics I have a whole bunch of drawers with other acrylics but these are the most commonly used ones so my paintings are acrylic and oil so um, a lot of the base part of the painting I'll do in acrylic, really just laying out where I want to do things. Mm -hmm. And then when I get to more detail, like in the skin, um, I'll go to oil for that. Okay. So my oils are all in these drawers here. Um, it's when you mix up oil paint palette, it really takes a little long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so if I'm going to have an oil day, it's just an oil day. Just mm -hmm. get everything done in oil as I can that day because it's a mess. I like to keep uh, color stories for a lot of my um, paintings. Paintings that I really liked the color harmony of and I thought the colors worked really well together. I will uh, record the actual recipe of exactly how I made that color. Oh, that's such a great <laughs> so, idea. <laughs> right, so I don't have to go through all that again. Great. Lesson learned. <laughs> um, so a lot of these are uh, oil. When I was first started painting in oils, I recorded exactly how I made each one. Like I started off with this color and then I added this and what that's what, had, what turned out. And all the way down here so I can save time later when I want to just pick up that color. Um, I do that for um, also my clients that I'm going to do a custom painting for. I usually will present the palette to the customer on a, a small canvas like this and I name each color and the client will tell me I want more of this one and less of that one. So it gives me an idea, especially for abstracts because it's hard to um, for people that aren't artists to explain exactly what they want as far as color. So having a palette laid out for them helps a lot for communication. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Great idea. Uh, I do a lot of art prints that I sell online and it's taken me a year to figure out what I like, um, whether it's worth it to frame them and what sizes to offer people. And um, I've learned a few things. <laughs> if you're gonna offer prints, you should really order every print yourself and make sure you like the quality of it. And if you're gonna frame them, order the frame so you like, so you know you like the frames because there's a big difference in quality from, from different companies. Um, these are paper prints. Um, and if you're making something large like this, I think this is a 20 by 20, um, you really need a really, really good photograph for mm -hmm. that to get all the detail there. So, and this one turned out really good. I got, even got like, you can see little discrepancies in the canvas. Yeah, and you can even see those little paint strokes in there. Yeah, this one I was really happy with. This is lots and lots of photographs, <laughs> lots of bad photographs, but I finally got a good one. Um, and then I had a lot of people asking about, um, can you get them framed or uh, gallery wrapped? So I ordered a bunch from different companies and I found one that I liked. And uh, this is an example of that. This is a gallery wrapped print. So it's same thing. I uh, used the same photo that I would have used for a paper print. Mm -hmm. And then they print it on this gallery wrapped and you can Either leave it, you know, unframed like that, or you can put it in a frame. My paper prints sell more than anything. It's just a different price point for sure. I think right. It's important to give people a different option. And then this year I started um, doing 
hand embellished prints as well. Not paper prints, I haven't gotten to hand embellishing them, I don't know how that would work. Yeah. <laughs> but with the canvas ones, like this one, mm -hmm. I added some texture here in the colors that I used from the original. And then I signed it myself and um, painted the sides. So this was something I just uh, had a special release just for the holidays. Well, what size, do you, how do you know what size do you get? Would you recommend yeah. bigger or smaller? I would say to have at least three sizes and small is good. Like I do have a lot of people that don't wanna leave the price point of a hundred dollars, you know, and that would be like this eight by 10. So yeah. I, um, but you don't want so many that people get overwhelmed. Yeah. And so size wise, I try to keep it three sizes, um, the eight by 10 or, or smaller. And then I don't really go more than like 30 by 40 for a print. The higher the size, the less resolution you get with the print. So, mm -hmm. um, it's good not to overwhelm your customers with too many sizes, but three is a good, good size. Okay. Um, I've learned that you need to have really good lighting, um, especially if you're gonna be photographing art inside. And so these, I have a set of two from, I just got these on Amazon and um, from this company, Limo Studios. And they, uh, there's a lot of YouTube tutorials on how to use them and how to light art. Uh, so I do that here inside and I um, close my doors here and usually put the art up against the wall, mm -hmm. against the doors and put the lighting on it evenly and um, use my Canon camera to take photographs, um, usually multiple photographs and merge them together in uh, Photoshop to get a really good quality image. Mm -hmm. So that is a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> so you do your own Photoshop work. Yes, okay. yes, like again, just all self-taught, like that's all I can do mm -hmm. in Photoshop. I can't Photoshop your head into someone else's picture. I can't do <laughs> advanced stuff like that, but I've got um, art photography pretty much down. So that's a big part of art uh, prints if you're ever interested in doing things like that. Okay, yeah. Okay, so Kristen, tell me about a typical day in your gorgeous studio. A typical day is um, not every day because when I'm working or the kids have a million things to do, I don't get up here as much, but I probably am in here two days a week. Probably. Okay. Yeah. A good four hour window of time to do stuff. So right. usually I try to do it in the morning mm -hmm. because I'm more creative in the morning. And then in the afternoon is when I do all like the shipping and marketing and all that stuff. Gotcha. So yeah, when I get up here, I like to um, mix up my palette. It takes a while to get all the colors just how I want them. Mm -hmm. And then um, I start painting. Sometimes it's successful and I get a painting <laughs> out of my efforts. And sometimes I don't get a painting, but I get a lot of what I learn from, you know, right. like it's not unproductive time in here, but I always have to, um, set my expectations low. I don't always <laughs> complete a painting, but yes. Right. Yeah, I mean, even whenever you paint something and maybe it doesn't turn out quite the way you want it to, at least you, maybe you learned something or yeah. learned about the process. Yes, mistakes are good because then you learn how a different media starts to work or you try to do something different. And it's so it's always productive, even though you don't feel like you've made anything that you like. <laughs> right, or at least you know, like, don't do that next time. <laughs> It's gonna save you so much time the next time you're up here. Yes. Right. So how do you find your creative inspiration? Um, it's weird. I will just look at old photographs, like old vintage Vogue magazine photographs. It's like an obsession that I have for uh -huh. some reason and hours will go by and I've just wasted so much time. Well, not wasted. Right, you were gotten inspiration. Right. So um, that's where I get all my inspiration. Even if it's like an abstract painting, it's uh -huh. usually I've seen um, some advertisement from an old magazine of a woman and just an impeccably dressed woman with perfect lipstick <laughs> <laughs> and a hat and just the colors that were in those old advertisements. Even that just inspires me to paint, even if it's not a woman that I'm painting. Right. So it's, 
I guess everybody gets and, their inspiration from unusual places. Yeah, well, that, that is mine. Yes, <laughs> and um, and I can see like definitely shows through like um like your glamorous ladies. You know, whenever I think of you know Kristen Cooney, I think of you know these gorgeous ladies that you paint <laughs> like your your bathing beauties or your you know the ladies wearing like the nice vintage style uh, dresses. It's, it's my thing. I don't know. Yes, but uh, that's just what makes me happy. I don't, I don't yes. know. <laughs> Hey, I mean, and it's it's works beautifully for you. I feel like those are like so popular. Well, thank you. I, one of the most rewarding things I think about art is that something that I love, like, and I just think it's quirky that I love it, and then I put it on a canvas, and just for me, right? <laughs> and then somebody else likes it. It's uh -huh. just like that is the most. The best part of being an yes, artist is yes, that rewarding. somebody likes what I like that I didn't think anybody else liked. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Oh, and I also love how you give your ladies like names and backstories. You know, tell me about that. Like, how do you come up with, with that? So, um, I feel like all those ladies should have a story. You know, I guess some people like to sell art and make the viewer just put themselves in that person's body and make up their own story. but. I like to give the viewer um, also a backstory because maybe a backstory that the viewer would never have, like uh -huh. being a debutante or going to an elegant cocktail party <laughs> or, um, you know, uh, the country club or the junior league, like things that <laughs> I don't do. Right. That probably those ladies in my paintings do. So I think it just right. adds a little extra aspect yeah, to the art. Yeah, and you get to kind of live vicariously through your ladies. Right, which I will never do. But <laughs> I like to pretend that right. that's what I would do. <laughs>
having a cocktail with them would be fun as an adult. Like you yes. could ask them, you know, maybe <laughs> some things. questions you always wanted to know when you were little. And <laughs> right. <laughs> now that I'm a grown up, right? Now like... you can tell me. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> what uh, exciting things do you have in store for this year? So um, this year is going to be very different for me. Um, I'm trying to. Uh, get out more um, on the e-commerce and um, with the uh, different licensing companies. So mm -hmm. it will be interesting to see all the work I did last year, getting all these paintings right. ready for these companies, um, what stores they might pop up into. So right. that's my 2021, a very different um, business aspect of my, right. of my art business. So, yes, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for having me over, for showing me your studio, yes. for teaching me about prints, and just telling me what's coming up and, and your inspiration. So, thank you, Katie. It's been so nice. Yes. You've been such a great guest. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and thanks Cheers. for the mimosa. Yes. <laughs>